Hey, this is Scott of wavecoding.com. In this example, I'll be going over the .NET Framework web client as well as parsing CSV files pulled down from the internet. Also using the background worker, a few other little things. In this example, I pulled down some information from Google's finance and Yahoo's finance uh, web pages where they offer up a CSV link to pull down stock data. So this application just pulls down the same information from both Google and Yahoo. It's basically a Disney stock, and it gives a few days of past information. And I parse it all out, I reformat it into a dictionary object, and then I push it back into these uh, strings. So let's look at the code. Of course, all the code will be on GitHub that you can check out. Here is the main form. So uh, this is the button that you can click on the form here at the top. So when you click that, you check your background worker. Make sure it's not busy. If it's not busy, you can start up the whole process. I just change a few form controls. Otherwise, it'll pop up a message box saying you can't do that at the moment. And here is the background worker's do work function. This gets called once this asynchronous run is executed. So what we do here, we get 10 days in the past. Of course, in the case of stock data, you will never have fully 10 days because it doesn't uh, have any information for the weekends. But I just do 10 days, it's simple enough. I also have a string builder to form my final strings. And then we have the custom object that I had written that we'll look at in more detail, of course. and then. It pushes down a dictionary object. If you've never used these before, they're very helpful. They give you two pieces of data. One is the key and one is the value. In the case of the value, this is another custom object. Let's look at that real quick. It's just basically a little container for stock data. Each daily piece of information has the open, the high, low, close, and volume. Let's go back to the form. So once, uh, let's see, we call in this case, I'm doing the Google stuff first, and then I do the Yahoo stuff at, under that. They're slightly different in how they work. Once you go on their pages, you can look at the URL, and you see the differences. So in, I just handle all of that in the code. So we're requesting data from Google under the New York Stock Exchange, Disney, past 10 days as a date-time object, and then uh, date-time now is the current day. We don't need to care about time because we don't use time at all. And then once we get that information back from the custom object we had written, we'd go through the whole group of data and we reformat it into a string again. Then we just do some formatting on the double values so we don't have extra decimal places that we don't really need for the example. Print it out into a string that is on the UI thread. But as long as it's not being accessed by the UI, uh, you don't have an issue with that cross-thread stuff usually. So that's just what I do. And we do the same exact thing for Yahoo. Slightly different. Yahoo doesn't have the a market that it's in. It just has DIS for Disney. And the same thing with the dates, because we make it generalized in our class. So look at, let's look at this main class here. What we do, I just have this linked in uh, the comments, but here is the Google address that gets pushed down. See these pieces right here? This is my custom thing that I'll replace later. I'll replace the ticker. I'll replace this S date and the E date. And the same exact thing at the Yahoo ticker, S date, E date. You can see, uh, scroll down a little bit. Here is get stock data from Google, got that same parameter list here. And all this does is call a few additional functions. We could go all the way down into construct Google link. So you look at the construct Google link. What it does here is it first replaces the ticker with the market plus the ticker string. And then in this case, Google has a, uh, I don't know what that would turn into, but it's uh, escaped character 
for the URL string between those two. And then if I go and I construct the dates for the Google thing, they're a little unusual. They use actual uh, for April, it's APR type of thing. And then you've got the start date and then a full four digit year. Same thing with the end date. And then we push those into the URL string. We send it back to the caller, which jumps up here. And it goes into the get data function. Let's scroll down to get data. So this is finally where we get to the web client. What it does is we've got this full URL now. We start up a web client using the using statement. This should hopefully close out and dispose of the web client once we're all finished. It's kind of the goal of those using statements. And then we do another stream. We open read for that web page. We pull it down as a full stream. We read the entire file. There are a few ways to do this. The web client has an actual download string, but I found that it's slower for some reason than this code right here. Could just be me or whatever I was doing at the time, but it seems slower. So this is what I had decided to use. A very important line right here, the information that we're pulling from at least Google, I'm not sure about Yahoo, but I first developed it to deal with the Google Finance stuff. The line endings were the Unix style line endings. So uh, when you pulled down all of the information as a string, you didn't have full uh, line endings for the Windows stuff. When you would try to parse through line by line, it's just not going to work unless you replace those Unix style line endings with the Windows ones. And then we go down to the actual parsing of the data. So this fills our dictionary object right here with all of that CSV data once we parse it out. What we do here, we're reading the entire block of uh, string data line by line. Then we go uh, per line, we'd split that up into pieces, of course, by the commas. Very simple. They don't use anything special in their CSVs, so you don't have to make anything specialized. Then we just parse out all of the data into doubles. And also at the end, we get, let's say, we get the actual date, which we use for our dictionary's key. We parse out that date. If it doesn't work for some reason, you just won't add that line to your uh, final result. And that passes back an entire dictionary to the caller, which goes all the way up back to this one right here. So when they call this function, they'll eventually get a dictionary back. Same exact thing with the Yahoo thing here. This is the same stuff. Of course, the difference here is in how you construct the URL. It does basically the same thing, except for the dates. It's completely different. They have A, B, C, D, E, F inside their link, and that signifies the start date and the end date. And they also have the month uh, one did one value off, so it's zero based instead of one based. That's pretty much it. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, definitely fun to play around with stock data. Of course, this probably be or definitely only be good for personal use. Uh, you want to check the terms of Yahoo and Google's stock information. So when you download stuff, you want to make sure you follow those terms. That's pretty much it. Hope you found this interesting. Scott from The Way of Coding. Thanks.